Well, hello, everyone. It's now six months since Stephen Slepcevich became president of Honeywell's electronic solutions business. I'm spending a bit of time with him today, and I want to find about, out about his plans for this division and how they're advancing and what we can expect to see in the market from Honeywell. Stephen, thanks again for joining us. First of all, uh, just give us a view of the big picture in terms of your strategy and priorities for the electronics solutions division. It sounds like it's quite long term in terms of what you're looking at. As I look forward, let's say 10 years from now or longer, I think we're going to see that this next decade is more disruptive than the previous decade in several areas, whether it's technology, uh, aircraft in the regulatory environment, business models in terms of how we do business with, with uh, in the aftermarket, uh, new entrants and consolidation. And so I spend a lot of time really looking at those industry drivers and how those things are trending over the, the next decade and, and trying to position Honeywell to be proactively shaping technology and business models so that we can be in a leader position, you know, a decade from now. No, that, that makes good sense. And it's refreshing to hear that you're looking, you know, well beyond the next few quarters and, and right through the decade. So when we talk specifically about business aviation, um, you know, how, how do you make that meaningful in terms of your changing relationships with with uh, your OEM partners and, and also with your with your end users? You know, how where, where are you going to put the effort to make sure that Honeywell is really competitive in the business aviation sector? Yeah, I, I think the best way to stay ahead uh, in, in uh, any business is innovation and new products. You know, we target our 20% or more of our revenues in any year to come from new products. That helps us stay fresh and competitive in, in any end market that, that we serve. Now, we've been a longtime leader in business aviation, as you know. Um, with our Primus Epic integrated cockpit, and we continue to innovate on that platform. The key is aligning with our OEM customers to define the roadmaps and bringing new features to market on a regular basis. And we do that both for new OEM aircraft as well as the aftermarket. And I would characterize those innovations in our new product strategy along four categories. Mm -hmm. Situational awareness, safety, connectivity, and efficiency. Those are really the pillars of, of our innovation strategy um, for, for business aviation. And I would love to give you an example of, of each. Please of do. Yes, please do. Okay, so let me, let me start off with safety because I think safety is usually, you know, front and center and, and, and really near, near and dear to our hearts in terms of how we innovate. Uh, one of the major safety issues we see out there today is something called runway excursions. This is where an aircraft unexpectedly leaves the uh, runway. Mm -hmm. and, and these excursions account for about 25% of incidents and in accidents in aviation today, and about 90% of runway accidents. So it's a really big deal. To respond to that, Honeywell introduced something called the runway overrun awareness and alerting system, or ROAS. This gives pilots an early warning of things like an unstable approach, a long landing, an extended flare, or delayed braking, and gives them time to make, adjusting, make adjustments and, and have, have a safe outcome. And so that's, that's an example of something we're doing in safety. If I switch over to situational awareness, Imagine uh, taxiing at night or in poor weather or at an unfamiliar airport. Honeywell introduced first 2D and the airport moving map. And this gives enhanced safety and situational awareness to the pilot by providing them information on runways, taxiways, signs, pavement markings. So when a pilot lands, we transform their primary flight display into a 3D taxi display and give them a very intuitive view of the environment. They're in. So that's, that's how we address situational awareness. That's also obviously a major 
uh, safety enhancement. Mm-hmm. You think about connectivity, operators are, are looking for affordable ways to get data and off the craft in real time wirelessly. So we responded by developing a aircraft data gateway, ADG 400, it's a new product. It helps operators to optimize their flight plans by integrating with their maintenance software. And they're also receive flight plans in chart databases in the environment. And then finally, I would say efficiency. Uh, customers are looking for ways to access data. Importantly, they're looking for insights from that data in terms of how to manage their air fleets. Mm-hmm. So we've developed a new data-driven analytics platform called Forge for Business Asian. That's Honeywell's uh, Internet of Things platform. It gives operators a single view of the fleet worldwide, helps them to more efficiently manage availability of aircraft, flight plans, and maintenance. So we think that uh, by innovating and bringing new products in that help customers with efficiency, connectivity, situational awareness, and safety. We'll continue to be a leader in uh, the business aviation sector. Yeah, absolutely. And I can see the, the coherence between those points, the tie-up between safety and situal, situational awareness and between connectivity and efficiency. And taking those sort of core columns, if you like, of, of innovation, do you see that being the focus of much of the research and development effort right over the next decade? I mean, can you take those those areas even further, perhaps, to things that we can barely conceive of today? Yeah, so if we look at sort of the short-term horizon, there's a number of new products that we're releasing this year and next year, which will serve both the OEM and aftermarket. These are products that will give customers immediate benefits in efficiency and cost. So a couple of examples. Uh, a new weather radar are the, uh, called the RDR 7000. It's a fully automated 3D weather radar. Uh, I actually unveiled this at the MBAA, uh, and it uh, is uh, going through final certifications. It will be coming out in the middle of this year. Uh, and we've got a lot of interest from customers in business aviation as well as commercial helicopters. And so very excited about that, that new offering. Um, also in the area of helicopters, a uh, very popular uh, 139 platform, which has our primus epic cockpit. We have a new upgrade coming out that provides really unparalleled situational awareness of terrain, obstacles, and landing zones in all phases of flight, independent of uh, any weather conditions. So we're really excited about that. And then, you know, one other example I would mention is we've had a project we've been working with Airbus on a new integrated cockpit, which will modernize uh, the flight deck for their A300 uh, aircraft, which is a popular uh, uh, cargo aircraft. So those are examples of things that we plan to introduce, you know, in the next uh, year or so. Um, If I shift over to maybe a midterm horizon, a little bit far out, but not too far. Uh, two major uh, priorities. One is is in um, our connected flight management system, our connected FMS, and the other one is our compact fly by wire. Let me talk about the connected FMS first. This is really our next evolution of our uh, industry leading FMS uh, product line. It, it makes use of a broad set of real-time information before flight, during flight, and after flight. And it's a platform that's enabled by connectivity between the aircraft, the onboard FMS, as well as data hosted in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're also creating an open ecosystem whereby Honeywell, OEMs, operators, and even third parties can collaborate in that environment to create new FMS features. So I think this is a is a really uh, high value um, uh, product that we're going to bring to market in the next few years. 
Mm -hmm. Compact by by wire. This is a new product that's going to leverage our experience in air transport flight controls. Um, however, packaged in a low cost compact form factor. So we'll provide a closed loop control system that will make aircraft easier to fly, provide complete envelope protection to reduce loss of control. And the target market for this compact by by wire is commercial helicopters, urban air mobility, yeah. and general aviation. So there's a couple examples of, of big projects that will come off in the uh, mid-term horizon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if I, if I kind of shift to the future, uh, you know, what's you know, sort of the art of possible and we look so, to the, so the back end of this current decade and even beyond, you mean? Yeah, that's right. You know, we, we see the need for simplifying the flying experience. Sometimes uh, we refer to that as simplified vehicle operations, path towards single pilot operations in some segments and ultimately full autonomy as well. Mm -hmm. um, the cockpit of the future uh, for, for Honeywell is gonna leverage the breadth of our entire portfolio that I described earlier. For example, new sensors that will enhance navigational performance and provide that additional level of redundancy and safety required. Uh, software adaptable radars that can uh, detect weather, perform the surveillance function, detect and avoid function, and then adding autonomy for all phases of flight. These are, these are technologies that are within our reach because of the breadth of our portfolio. And we're investing uh, in new products in, in uh, all of these areas. We're testing some of them in our labs. Uh, we'll be testing them ultimately in our flight test aircraft. And uh, you'll hear more about uh, these areas in the coming year. Yeah, interesting. And by the sound of it, you're, you're making these technological journeys with your existing customers in the case of that flight, new flight management system, but also talking to, to people pioneering new aircraft like the urban air mobility sector, which is quite active at the moment. Uh, some of the areas where we're investing heavily today is how we incorporate artificial intelligence and machine learning into our software platforms. We think that's going to be a real important capability as, as aircraft become more autonomous uh, and, and, and have um, the, the need for enhanced safety. Uh, GPS denied navigation is a big focus area. LIDAR, air data systems, and then a number of technologies with, which integrate um, all of our systems to create flight autonomy. So I'd say those are really the, the key areas of early technology development where we're investing and we think will help shape the, the market needs and, you know, over, the, over the next decade. Thank you. That's fascinating. And then just finally wrapping up on safety, Honeywell has been a big advocate of, of your enhanced vision system technology, uh, potentially as an alternative to head-up displays. Um, d d how do you feel about your prospects for getting FAA to, to change requirements for non-head-up display solutions? Is, is that still something that's important to you? It is, it, but, but here's, how I, here's how I would answer that. I mean, we're focused really on software side, our proprietary software, you know, synthetic vision and combined vision systems, which combine synthetic vision with enhanced vision systems. That's where we're focused. You know, one of the challenges we see with, with enhanced vision system sensors is the limitations they have you know, in certain atmospheric conditions or with, with range. Additionally, we look at some of the airports in the US and Europe that are transitioning from incandescent to LED lighting. And that actually is a, is a big challenge for being able to see the lights for some of the sensors like infrared. So what we're focused on is really is the onboard software piece mm -hmm. and how to enable lower minimums like synthetic vision guidance systems. And we did a, we did a successful proof of concept program in synthetic vision guidance systems with the FAA and EASA where we demonstrated through flight testing and simulation minimum performance requirements. And then subsequently, there was some certification guidance that was released that doesn't limit 
the display requirement to head up or head down for, let's say, Cat 1 ILS um, with a you know, 150 foot decision height. So what we're doing is we're continuing to work through the industry committees to um, define those requirements that extend the capabilities of our synthetic vision guidance system. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you for that. I do appreciate that. And thank you for going into such detail um, as, to, as to where your plans are, are leading you. It's good to hear that, you know, at a time of crisis when many of us can't look much beyond the rest of this month, that uh, at Honeywell, you really are thinking long term um, in terms of both how to improve the viability, the sustainability of the industry, and indeed its safety. So, Stephen, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that, and very best of luck with all those plans. We'll catch up with you again on those if we may sometime. Great. Thanks, Charles. Nice chatting with you. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.